Hello guys and welcome back to another satisfactory guide and today we're looking at creating 10 reinforced iron plates per minute and this will be one of our first layouts on our website satisfactorytips.com which will be released to the public shortly. Now if you do need a bird's eye floor plan image of the factory do check out the website guide, I'll provide a link below once it is running. Also, if you do find this video helpful, please drop a thumbs up and if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe. Anyway, let's jump in. So, for this build you will need to have a total of 120 iron ore available per minute. This equates to a single Mark 1 miner on a pure node or two on a normal node. Do note that you will need to use Mark 2 belts whenever items on a belt are greater than 60. The grid we will be using is 8 wide by 7 deep and you will need enough resources to cover 2 assemblers, 8 constructors and 4 smelters on top of items for splitters, mergers and belts. First we shall place down the manifold for the iron ore. Place splitters in the center of column 1 flowing from the left to the right of the grid, as well as a splitter in the centre between the 4th and 5th column and a 3rd splitter between the 5th and 6th column. From there attach the Mark II belt along the 1st, 2nd and 3rd splitter. Following on from here we shall now place the smelters directly in front of each of the splitters as well as a single smelter in line between the 6th and 7th column. Next we will build the screw constructor line. Place a splitter in front of the first smelter then directly in front of the splitter place a constructor. Then place another constructor to the right of our first constructor. You can now connect the smelter, splitter and constructors up using the Mark 1 belts, then set these constructors to manufacture iron rods. Now place a merger in front of the second constructor flowing to the right of the grid. Then, immediately to the left and right of this merger, place splitters flowing to the right. You will now place three constructors, one in front of each of the splitters and the third constructor to the right of the second constructor. These should all be set to screws. Now connect these together with Mark 1 belts. Also place mergers flowing to the right in front of the second and third constructor. All constructors will merge using a Mark 1 belt, however you will need a Mark 2 belt between the mergers and also following on to the assemblers which we shall cover shortly. We shall now place the last three constructors in front of the th three free smelters. I have placed these constructors directly in front of the smelters and parallel to the rod constructors. These three constructors will produce iron plates and we shall now load balance the iron plates so that we have a 30-30 split of iron plates for the assembler. So place a splitter in front of the second constructor and a merger directly to the left of it following forwards as well as a second merger flowing forwards directly in front of the third constructor. Then connect the first constructor to the left merger, the second constructor should connect to the splitter in front and the third constructor should connect to the second merger. Then connect two of the splitter outputs to the two mergers. Next we shall place the two assemblers. The first assembler should be placed so that the left hand input is in line with the left hand merger of the iron plates constructor section. When placing make sure that you place the assembler no less than two spaces in front of the merger as we will need the space for screws to enter from above. 
The second assembler should be placed parallel to the first, again with the left input directly in front of the right hand merger. We shall now place a manifold line using splitters for the screws. Do note you will need to use Mark II belts here. First, place the splitter flowing to the right directly above the splitter along the iron plate line. You will then need to place a splitter directly next to the merger at the end of the iron plate line and then stack a second splitter flowing to the right above it. You can then delete the one below as it was just a placeholder. Now connect the splitters together using a Mark I conveyor as well as the splitter outputs to the second inputs on the assemblers. Note that you will need to connect the manifold line using Mark II conveyors with the merger output from the screws line. The assemblers should now be set to reinforced plates and you can now merge the assembler outputs and run them to another factory or storage unit. And once completed and connected to power, you should be able to produce 10 reinforced iron plates per minute and there you are. Um, if you did find this video helpful please do drop a thumbs up and if you want to see more don't forget to subscribe and we are striving to make these guides easily understandable and easy to follow for everyone so if you feel there is any way in which we can improve them or you've just found these particularly helpful then please do let me know in the comment section below. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching and until next time, as always, ciao for now.